very good issue on liver cancer came in the journal of hepatology in february 2020 and uh, when we read this issue uh, the two queries that come in the mind is one is are there too many new things are we seeing a lot into molecular biology or is it that the old is gold so that is why this talk is uh, advances in the surgical management where i will try to cover both these questions so we have already seen uh, when we see a patient of hcc the first question is when to suspect hcc screening recommendations and how to evaluate the lesion after this we have to assess the patient to plan treatment and for this we need to see how to plan the patient treatment based on the staging systems so now already covered suspecting hcc and screening recommendations by dr farke and amar has very clearly explained the lyrate system to evaluate the lesion so now we will see how to assess an hcc patient and for this based on bclc as well as based on our previous uh, patient assessment video the three factor checklist is very important for your opds you have to check the patient performance status so you may be planning very good treatments for the patient but if the patient is poor performance status the patient will not tolerate a hepatectomy the second is seeing the extent of disease and the third is assessing the liver function these three factors are very interrelated and hence we need to assess all these three factors to plan patient treatment performance status as we all know can be assessed using the ecog or the karnofsky scale extent of disease as amar has already discussed now is based on the lyrate system and liver function is very important and a tricky part because these patients can be cirrhotics or non cirrhotics and how we assess liver function is we assess the chilpuck score and the mel score to assess the functional reserve we have started doing functional volumetry but predominantly the experience is with ct volumetry as of now and portal hypertension in our unit we assess using upper gi endoscopy for absence of varices we look at uh, splenomegaly platelet count and portal vein diameter in the doppler so these are the factors that we usually assess to assess the liver function of the patient now why these three factors because when we see the most commonly utilized the staging system and this is the simplified uh, version of the bclc staging system as we know it the three points that i have discussed determine the bclc staging that is the liver function extent of disease and the patient performance status so that is why these three factors are very important so now going into a bit of details how to apply lyrates once you see the lyrate score on your report amar has already discussed what the what these colored uh, markers mean but how to assess them so when you have a report from radiologist saying that there is no liver lesion it is negative or it is lyrates 1 or 2 these are the patients who are for surveillance as discussed by dr farke and you can do surveillance six monthly in these patients these are the patients lr4 which is a high risk group but not clearly hcc lrm which i call as metastatic to make it easier and lrtiv that is tumor in vein these are the patients who may need a biopsy for pathological diagnosis so biopsy in hcc is not routinely done but these are the groups where you may need a biopsy after dual imaging the third group is lr5 where hcc is confirmed and this is where the bclc staging comes into picture so lyrates since 2018 is coming into practice and this is how we have implemented it so now coming to bclc or the standard of care for hcc so what are the treatment options in bclc as we know the left hand column are the treatment options which are not curative but they are the treatment options which are utilized to take the patient from a non curative place to a curative place so taste air portal vein embolization or surgical partial portal ligation are 
treatments which can convert the patient into resectable or patients can they be then taken for transplant or ablation so curative treatment options for hcc are uh, liver resection liver transplant and ablation and other treatments are used as an adjunct to convert the patient into curative treatment so now if we see the bclc as described by amar the stage 0 and stage a are patients who fit the milan criteria and these are the patients who can be taken up for curative treatment which may be ablation resection or transplant however when the liver function deteriorates and the disease is multinodular but the patient is preserved functionally these are the patients which are ideally suitable for embolization or drug however when the patients have portal vein invasion or nodal or metastatic disease this is an advanced stage in bclc and the predominant treatment in this group is medication again it depends on the liver function status if the function is poor the patients may not tolerate medication the last group is patients with poor performance status and these patients have poor liver function and they are only suited for palliation so now when we see this classification it is not clear cut as dr fatke also told it's a probability based classification you don't have distinct marking that above 5 this is what is done above 10 this is what is done so that is why the february 2020 issue of hepatology was mentioned by me because it gives you some idea on the questions of how to know these probabilities so when to reject when to transplant and when to embolize so these are the key questions that we need to know as clinicians so let us see some of the factors on how we decide to select a patient for resection the first and foremost important point is inadequate future liver remnant and this is the achilles heel of liver resection this can be because of a cirrhotic liver or a large tumor and when this happens our strategy now is to do a trans arterial embolization first followed by portal vein embolization and this is because as amal described the hepatic tumors are arterially supplied and so there was a risk of uh, pro tumor progression when only portal vein embolization was done especially in large abscess hccs in fibrotic cirrhotic and steatotic livers as we know nash is now coming as the most common cause of uh, cirrhosis and these are the patients who benefit by a sequential embolization followed by portal vein embolization studies are coming up on this group including our study this was published recently in a journal in 2020 where we have published our center's data and you can see that the tumor size have been large this is this is a study of around 20 patients across the bclc staging and uh, what we have done is we have done sequential tes and portal vein embolization in cases with inadequate flr the other point in liver surgery is to prevent post operative liver decompensation and the issue highlights some of the key factors that produce liver decompensation or post operative liver failure so phlf is now being termed as post operative liver decompensation as not all the patients end in failure but they definitely have liver decompensation which affects their life as well as their treatment so which are these predictors portal hypertension since ages has been known as a poor predictor of uh, outcomes a major hypertectomy meld more than 9 and liver stiffness is coming up in some studies so these are the major uh, predictors of post operative liver decompensation another important point that affects survival in these patients is macrovascular invasion so as we extend the limits of uh, surgery in these patients we need to identify points where we need to stop so when not to reject is very important so macrovascular invasion as you can see this is our uh, data when vascular invasion is present the survival goes down significantly so this has been covered by the liver cancer study group of japan recently where they they have given a portal vein invasion classification 
going from segment to hilum so from a single cuneus segment going into the sectoral vein going into the main portal vein and then going into the hilum and as per the hong kong classification of liver cancer staging system you can operate up to the venous invasion 3 that is ipsilateral main venous invasion is okay but if the main portal vein is involved or contralateral branch is involved these patients should not be selected for resection and these patients as per bclc also should not be selected for resection next we come very briefly to a very recent advance in transplant selection criteria so as we all know milan and ucsf have stood the test of time there are a lot of other criteria but none of them have given outcomes better than milan but now you are coming up with biologic criteria for selecting patients of hcc and the tumor biology is now being included with the differentiation of tumor alpha fetoprotein levels and vascular invasion so these are the new uh, criteria that are now being selected and this is known as an extended biologic criteria for selecting the patients for transplant so again a new area interesting area coming up the last part is embolization and dr rahul sheth is going to give you the details as he is the expert but i am just going to talk on a few points that may lead to his talk so transarterial chemoembolization as per bclc is recommended for bclc b but this issue the studies are now questioning is it in all bclc b just like child b we all know has a good and a bad uh, same way can we segregate bclc b into a subgroup and we use patients compensation status of cirrhosis and no vascular invasion as well as small volume disease and no portal hypertension so can we select these patients only for this so this is one of the papers in the issue and they say that these are the criteria which give you the best outcomes for this of, of course dr rahul said experience will help in this matter another important point coming up here is that there was a very blur boundary between when to stop case and when to start sorafenib or when to shift treatments and a lot of studies are now focusing on how to identify taste refractoriness and there are some points now coming up which are also being made into a scoring system the first point is elevated liver enzyme especially aspartate amino transferase worsening child pug score on taste this has been identified as one of the key criteria to identify taste refractoriness and this is because once the child pug score worsens beyond an extent even the medication can't be used the next next is lack of radiological response so as amal discussed lyrets give you a treated criteria and if the radiological response is not there between two sessions this may be a pointer to shift to medical management another interesting point is alpha fetoprotein more than 200 so this is a group where dr menon will also discuss that there are some drugs which work very well in this group is may not work well in this group as per a study in this issue bclc stage therefore as i would discuss can we divide bclc b and select patients accordingly so that we can switch to sorafenib or other first line drugs early in these cases because once the taste becomes refractory and the child pug score changes this is possible in only 15 to 20 percent patient after that so i think one of the advances that's going to come up is when not to embolize as far as transarterial chemo embolization is concerned one another interesting advance in this field is transarterial radio embolization and there are two studies on this the sara and the sirvenib and we know that this is not a part of the european group or the bclc as of now but the aasld is already suggesting the use of air especially in cases where taste is contraindicated mainly in patients with vp3 
uh, this is the <coughs> liver cancer study group of japan where they are suggesting there the other is when tumor burden is less than 50% of the liver volume and the bilirubin is normal so tear will expand the inclusion criteria in bclc b because it does not completely occlude the artery as we all know so this is again an interesting point to highlight the last point before i conclude is on systemic therapy and an advance came which suggested that atezolizumab and bevacizumab is the new standard in hcc whereas solafenib took a very long time to reach this spot this combination has not taken that long so a bit skeptical about this and i am sure dr menon will touch upon this in a lot of detail but this was a slide presenting in a recent congress and a bit worrisome so take home message for uh, surgical management and its advances in uh, hcc the assessment of patient is based, based on bclc and you should do it based on extent of disease on lyrex patient performance status and liver function as these three points will help you decide the treatment as of now the treatment is based on bclc where bclc 0 and a is curative bclc b embolization works better if the liver function is preserved bclc c is drug versus palliation and bclc d sadly is only palliation rejection as i have discussed the advances are that we should identify predictors of post operative liver decompensation and not phlf and we should measure the flr as of now using ct volumetry but meprofenin is coming up in a big way so that is an exciting area transplant as i have told tumor biology is a new criteria and this needs more consideration in future studies and one very important point is not to give up on patients and shift to medication at the right time when the tes is not working and tear may come up very soon in bclc as we have already started using it in some patient but it's not a part of the standard guideline dr raul shit will discuss more on this so thank you for your attention